What's going on, you five people, and welcome back. Today, we're going to be breaking down Cannonball, the newest card to Marvel Snap. You guys know the drill. Is it going to be a big splash or a complete pass? Alex and I are going to break down the synergies, the decks, everything you need to know, as well as ranking the spotlight caches. On top of that, we're going to be breaking down the giant content patch in the month of March. I obviously didn't make a video on it this week, so extra excited to break down all the changes, all the features, and more. And then lastly, we had a huge reception on our five-cost card tier list so we're going to do it again with the six cost cards get a little bit s tier a little f tier and then of course alex and i are probably going to disagree and agree on a lot of the placements we're going to talk about that all today and more on this episode of the snapchat and as always i'm joined by mr alex kocha hello buddy hello we've got ourselves a brand new week and snap gone with the mockingbird week and the march content patch and on to cannonball which uh every time i, I hear his name i just i just think of the anchorman uh, the classic, the classic Anchorman quote. Cannonball! I thought you were going to say I love lamp. So I'm pleasantly surprised already. Either that or 60% of the time it works every time. Every time. Well, Alex, what do you think about this week, man? What do we got going on? How has the week been for you? We had the X-Men uh, versus Avengers, as you see here in, in our graphic. Uh, and we had the event... Kind of come out of nowhere in the imbalance balance patch. What are your thoughts on uh, on the imbalance balance patches in general? I like them, and I like this one too. Like, I actually thought that it was pretty cool. I think the X Men condition ultimately proved a lot easier to pull off than the Avengers one. But honestly, I like it. I'm all about it. Truthfully, like, if you can shake up the meta a bit and don't make any like permanent changes to make cards completely broken and impact people's token spending and stuff like that, then like, I don't see how that's a bad thing, right? Marvel Snap, we are addicted to a shifting meta. Like, we are legitimately addicted to it, and that's exactly what this gives us. Do you feel like it's a good amount of time, or too long, too short? I don't even know when this one ends. I don't remember the I, I, I was going to say, I don't think I know either. I think it's a week long. I probably, I don't know. I still stand behind like maybe two weeks because then it's like a long time and then you can get used to it. But at the same time, if you hate them, that's a long time to deal with. So like, I guess a yeah. week is the sweet spot. Yeah, a week's probably fine. Like in my opinion, do these more often. Get rid of hot locations and featured locations. Like seriously, like just get rid of oh, those damn dude, locations. I wish. Like they ruin the game. And every time there's Twitch drops, cozy, they do hot locations after, and every, every time. everyone's miserable. Like everyone's so miserable. I told you I did. I like orchestrated this tournament in New York, and I had to like help out new players. There's four new players, right? And the hot location was uh, Altar of Death that day, and you just have all these new players. That are like why is my car dying over and over and i don't care about this energy i don't want it and i'm like it's like they line up at the worst the worst times but uh you know what we're talking about on this side we've got another great tier list to do together what are we talking about on your side of the snapchat ozzy we're gonna be talking about mockingbird in review we're gonna be discussing some decks with mockingbird our general thoughts and giving a star-based review we'll also be talking about our top 10 avengers and x-men cards which is certainly be a lot of fun and then finally back again is the snapchat mailbag well, Alex, before we can begin, I, I feel like I'm talking to Clark Kent uh, without his 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 costume on, without his, his superpower. Where the hell are your glasses? They're here. They're here. Sorry, but I forgot, I okay. forgot to put All them right. on. My doctor's like, Alex, put your glasses on. It shook me. I, feel, I was like, who am I talking? Who is this? I, I, I've seen him before, but now now we're now we're, we're back ready to go. Uh, well, buddy, we've got uh, the good week ready and uh, Cannonball is our new card this week and uh before we jump into him we have our spotlights this week in what was the last week of the spotlights and then they swapped them and some people still got her but if you didn't update i don't know but it's miss marvel and it is kitty pride alongside cannonball what are your impressions of the spotlight week uh before we jump into the card i think that like right off right off the bat like miss marvel and kitty pride are two cards you definitely want in your collection kitty pride has proven to be a little underpowered even with hope summers right like it's but it's such a unique card that it's going to have its time again. It's going to come back. And I bet you second dinner was hesitant of buffing um, Kitty Pride in advance of, first of all, Nelson buff. And secondly, with uh, Hope Summer's coming out, right? So I think that it is overall landed a little bit on its face. But when it gets buffed, you're going to want it in your collection. Uh, and Miss Marvel, I mean, what can we say about Miss Marvel? Like literally the uh, the greatest two-star card in the history of Marvel. <laughs> I feel like Kitty Pride's a good card, but she'll just she's just not ever what she was and then she wasn't what she was before what she was right like it's just tough to she's decent value but it's tough to get her you know uh get excited about her because you knew what she used to be uh but i do agree i think uh that is gonna be a nice segue into cannonball and uh cannonball guys if you don't know he's a five cost card he's eight power alongside it on reveal you're gonna move the highest powered enemy card away 
Now, if any of those locations are full or if Professor X has locked it down, you guys know the drill. It's going to destroy that card and replace it with a rock in that exact location. And uh, definitely unique ability. We, we only see a couple of move cards and only see a couple of targeted destroy cards at that as well. So uh, pretty interesting. Got a couple of mechanics that we seen, but we haven't seen just like this. And without going into synergies or anything, hit me with your initial star rating. You know what? I'm a little hesitant on Cannonball. I'm coming in at a two star rating. Um, I know it's low, but like I have some optimism around the card, but I just I'm not as sold on it as others might be. Wow, man. Two, two star. That's exactly what I gave it to. Yeah, I gave it a two star as well, <laughs> you man. Got me yeah, so no. nervous. <laughs> no, no, not at all, man. I think uh, this is definitely um, this is going to be a fun card. There's going to be some decent things you can do. And, and that's what we're going to we're going to talk about is like where he is going to shine and, and, and kind of where we do see him. But I think ultimately uh, this is a fun card coming out in a tough month full of really good cards and more fun cards in the case of like Pixie. So it's like kind of this really weird spot for Cannonball. But again, it does have uh, insanely strong effects to it. And that's kind of what I want to break down and where we see it fit. But you can, we, we kind of done this song and dance before with cards that are somewhat similar to him, if you will. And, and I just don't know. It's the five cost that really, that really does it. And not only that, he reminds me of like Ronin in a way that you can't control outside of some deck play where your opponents are filling up. And if they're filling up, you do need locations filled up to really get the biggest bang from this guy. And because of all those conditionary, you know, things you need to check off a box, a two star, and that might even be, it's not that that might even be high, but like I, I was actually close to like 1.5. I think he's, he's a fine card. You're going to get some good games out of him, but he reminds me of like a Spider-Man 2099, if you will. Oh, that, that's the best comparison. I think that a lot of people have been comparing him to Stegron, which I think is kind of fair, but I often in my head thought of him more in line with what Spider-Man 2099 is. However, what I will say is like, Tell you what sells me on the two star rating. Um, it's uh, it's called Obsidian. That's a four cost ten, and we have shown that that of that like requirement of having a one cost card is like almost non existent, honestly. And like with Cannonball, you got a five eight. When do you want Cannonball over Vision? When do you want Cannonball over almost every other five drop? Like that's kind of the question. And we are going to talk some synergies and stuff. But like, what about even Arrow? Like, I kind of see this as a reverse Arrow that needs a condition to do what Arrow does. Kind yeah. of. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? It, it, but with, for less power. So I'm kind of, I'm not sold on the power. So I'm glad you brought that up. I mean, the thing I like about him the best is that you get to target the highest uh, power enemy card, right? Like that, that has not really uh, been, not that it hasn't been seen before, but there's not a lot of like, you get to destroy X card, right? It's Shang-Chi show or bust. And... I like that. I think there is some cool, unique opportunities for, you know, again, swinging something big and moving the devil dinosaur. And, and, and again, we'll talk about some of these, but like one example, just like right off the rip where, you know, there are going to be people on the side of Cannonball did this for me. And they do have a point. Living Tribunal, great example. What wins those lanes? It's Onslaught onto Iron Man, right? And so to be able to take that and move the Onslaught to another lane, all of a sudden you have a massive swing and, and you probably stole a lot of cubes. So I think the you don't have to destroy a card for this to be good. But it's just going to be very wonky. And, and I don't know about you. I mean, you need some stability and, and reason and, and less guessing and snap for it to be uh, considered like a, a staple card to unlock. Or, you know, obviously in this kind of month of competition to use the caches for. Yeah, no, that's the other thing that you bring up, right? Like how competitive this month is. We already know War Machine's coming next week that's you're gonna want to use spotlight keys for it right like we know that cannonball like is this a save week and it's funny because like they've rearranged the spotlight caches in a way where like you don't even really want cannonball as much as you want everything else in the spotlights you want miss marvel you want kitty pride to some degree right and like that's why when they made the change i was like come on man like why are we doing that like they made the like oh, last week or mockingbirds week was like a banger like you gotta go and it really mud muddled the waters a little bit on cannibal because it felt like the most skippable week of the like the season by far and now miss marvel's there and i'm just like oh my heart not a coincidence i think they i think they knew i think they saw okay we <laughs> yeah, have miss marvel that is as good as she is mockingbird is overperforming in our testing cannibal kind of sucks let's put miss marvel in there like there's just i have a hard time feeling that that wasn't uh deliberate but uh either way did make it a bit more muddy especially for uh, you know, pulling the caches, pulling the unlocks. But let's go ahead and talk about Cannonball and, and where we do see 
uh the chance for him for alex and i to be wrong dead wrong right like there's there are some chances there let's break down those decks and and honestly alex that's kind of the other thing for our argument i usually have just like buckets of synergy and like what about this there's stuff here but it's just not near as much as some other cards that we've had in the past and the I synergy agree. okay yeah uh the synergy actually go ahead and kick us off man what, what is the synergy you want to start with all right so the one that like i've really tried I, I always talk about i like working through the lines i like building the decks pen and paper right there's only one that i feel like has a legitimate shot and that's gangster move and i feel like we talked about gangster move like two weeks ago how you said it's being slept on i actually kind of agree i played it a little bit just like on my phone chilling whatever i actually liked it like i feel like people are sleeping on it a little bit however if you think about it you have kingpin right on turn two then you have juggernaut steggy cannonball on five these are now all every single turn you're disrupting their board state but you're kind of just moving the power around you're swishing it around and is it always going to hit kingpin not really these are all very random effects but if they do then, then the negative is pretty significant and then you can magneto six or whatever i just think that it could work in a shell like that curious about your thoughts well first it's mobster move you hurt my heart over here you know oh, it's uh coming get the double m you know it's uh it's the perfect thumbnail but yeah no i agree i think when you try to only do the destroy thing it's just not going to be there right like if you try to get like a null synergy going or something like you're just you're, you're cooking too much uh but when you are like okay i can destroy it or i can go ahead and and just work with the move package as well and obviously as you bring up kingpin we always got to bring up the inverse of kingpin which is obviously craven right so those two working in tandem this deck outside of the patriot deck this was the one i took up to infinite a ton i love mobster move i think it has a lot of utility it's got cards in its arsenal like magneto that counter the venoms counter all these other cards like miss marvel which you might see a tick up uh, you know tick up and, and playability because of the spotlight week it's just a solid list with a lot of answers and strong value cards polaris spider-man it all works together and now you add in a card that isn't bad value you know five eight i wish he was a five nine i'll be honest uh a, a, with some good potential there uh, you know to really swing swing high and destroy a big car so i agree i think adding the movement package with the destroy package in a way where you don't bust on cannonball might feel the best um outside of him man i really thought okay well it, it's the same deal if we're not going to uh you know let our opponent make the decision to fill their lanes let's do it for him debris green goblin it, naturally kind of a junk build i think a junk build could work junk is just a weird archetype we've talked about this in the past it's kind of this blend now if you will of uh like galactus right like that you almost see a good a good amount of galactus i think that the junk archetype wouldn't mind having this as a top deck option as an either or scenario if you're leaning more into the junk old style days instead of the galactus of now absolutely because you need some way to actually like if you want to get the destroy side of it then like you actually have to commit resources to setting that up and that actually kind of like gave me a little bit of hesitance with the card because like people were like oh this is just a higher status shang chi it was like well no it's not like shang chi has a very reliable effect oh that card's over 10 power it dies now you know what i mean and, and but this card you have to set up the board state to take advantage of it and you have to like throw initiative right initiative is a factor as well keep in mind right because if their cards face down right it's not the highest power so like there's there's definitely things to consider there However, what you're saying is right. If you're junking them a little bit, you have a higher chance to actually proc that destroy effect while also giving them that rock. Yeah, it's the it's the five cost. It's the five cost. Uh, we've seen this song and dance. If the five if a five cost card, we just did the tier list last week. If it doesn't bring immense value, it just is super tough to be able to reliably put it in so many decks. And, and that's where it's like I just don't know if that value is there for Cannonball. Now he could be a, an extremely great addition. To the junk archetype maybe you have a little bit of uh you know you get the sinister six and you get the uh, green goblin with kingpin i don't know whatever right you get some big negative points you get some uh you get some junk in there maybe he works out there again i like the debris uh action the other way that i like or the other thing i like and glad to see it in a way is the synergy with some other x-men i think that professor x is the most clear-cut way to just shut down a lane and that way you know one of two things you know you're either destroying a card which odds are probably pretty good or you know exactly what lane it's going to go into and i like that a bit better outside of he's a five cost card too so it's gonna be tougher to make it work the only way i can see it working is if you bring back the classic psylocke in a pro x style play right uh, use psylocke to kind of ramp the card out not necessarily in a thanos based deck 
because well time stone got changed as well right so professor x has had all these like attack vectors put on like i could actually see pro x getting power back by the way like this is a whole other conversation but i i can definitely see pro x being a, a pretty decent part of this deck yeah hope, uh, hope summers too i think hope summers like i think that's kind of what you know hope summers has restored a lot of the five cost cards but as we know we you can't you can't just depend on it so you got to put a couple in there and uh, i actually don't hate the hope summers play i think also with the hope summers if we're going to talk about her we can also mention a, a decently cool synergy of maybe gene gray where you have we've seen this before too where you have the gene lane your deck's built to kind of move around it but then you keep moving cards out for them and they have to play in here over and over and over and so i actually like that idea a ton with cannonball so now we have a bit of a mix here of pro x cannonball gene gray and uh the best time to do all that will be before they get rid of this x-men buff up patch that we'll be talking over on alex's side uh of, of the snapchat but yeah so those are the initial synergies what else you got for me i, I might be huffing hopium but uh can i talk about grandmaster can i bring up grandmaster for a sec yeah bring like, him in, up. in theory in theory you could grandmaster him right like you can play him grandmaster move him over proc it again and the only thing is, is like if you bring something over it destroys right it'll put a rock there it'll go to the middle it'll try to push things over there maybe the rocks blocking that spot right because it occupied it that gets destroyed too i don't know i just think it could be interesting uh, you, you definitely need a perfect board setup for it but hey that's what grandmaster does takes the greediest possible situation and makes it greedier if you're gonna go for fun you might as well go all in you might as well get, you know invite all the friends over and, and go uh with the grandmaster play at that yeah dude you'd be like moving a devil dinosaur play grandmaster he just moves it right back like that's exactly what uh <laughs> that's what's gonna happen with uh with that but uh yeah i mean hey i like the spicy take i think uh you know any type of cards we could talk about priority it's just it's too much copium like you know like yeah, hey know. ghost you know maybe maybe this is where we have go no like we've done that song and dance it just is not worth it because of the amount of lives out there uh but you know where i do think he he's gonna have that you know big swing is and we've seen this before is the arnim zola black panther plays the doom odins the wong combos the onslaught iron man where you move a car that they fully banked on they had a, such a good feel the venom decks the ones where the, you know you wait you're waiting for the arnim zola venom uh, a lot of times Noel is in just one lane. So, you know, pushing Noel to another lane is going to, you know, definitely mess up those decks. I think there is a, a good shot to have some disruption there. But, uh, but again, if we just think about all the other five costs, I'd rather have just about anything else. Why risk that when I can Valkyrie it? You know, like why, why, exactly. why risk that when I can Valkyrie a, a Venom? And, and at that point I was even thinking, okay, uh, I don't know about you, but when I build like a Valkyrie deck sometimes, right? I'm like, uh, I love playing Valkyrie. Let's say with hood and then that way you can get a really cool one drop and then you can also play down your big five drop so i'm like okay it could be like an alternative to, to having a valkyrie deck but even then i just you brought up arrow who's a five nine there's just much better options in here it's 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 a tough sell it is and like again it's the board condition of having to set it up so that like oh it can't move well then here's the rock here's the destruction like that's so damn hard like what's your board look like because when i was talking about grandmaster like that kind of deck would have ravona the goblins of course pro x in it like there, there's definite synergy there like i kind of made a pen and paper version of that deck but i was like man still like it is so much effort for one card. Like, and we kind of fall victim to that when we're designing decks around cards. Like, hey, it's, uh, you know, Mockingbird release day, and let's, like, just shoehorn Mockingbird to every possible thing. But, hey, in that case, it pretty much went everywhere. But, like, this card, it's like, is it really a build-around card, or is it going to be an addition to, you know, a, but probably not. It's just going to be a card no one plays, more than likely. Yeah, here's the good news. The good news is we have probably the most cracked card coming out next week. And so the great news is you get to just pass this, right? I would say you have a little bit more of a tough decision if you don't have Miss Marvel. Because then at this point, yeah. you're, you're just like, it's just tough. It's tough because you do want that card. Do you want her more than War Machine? I just don't think so, right? So like if you're yeah. only sitting at a couple, you just, it, it's worth the wait for War Machine. And that's, that's the best news. Obviously watch Alex and I's content. You'll see what we think of the card. I would assume we're not going to adjust much. I, I just... We've done this enough. We've played enough new cards. I, I, you know, I've, I've tested enough to know when a card has the potential to, to kind of exceed the expectations. And I just can't, I can't get there. I can't get there. And, and with me being like, oh man, I'm going to bump this up to a four star. If anything, it can maybe go up a star rating, but it'd have to wow me. 
I, I definitely agree. And hey, listen, like I've missed the shot on cards in the past, right? We, it's well documented on the Snapchat, and I hope to be I hope to be wrong. Honestly, I hope this card comes out and it's an absolute banger. I, I really do because there's going to be people rolling for Miss Marvel. They're going to get it anyway, right? They're going to have to go four deep for Miss Marvel or whatever. Hey, there's nothing wrong with adding to your collection. So I'm always hoping a new card coming out splashes the meta a little bit. I just I just don't see it in this case. And as we saw with let's say Meek. Guess what, guys? If it kind of under delivers, then you can almost have a surefire bet. Hercules got only like two weeks until he got adjusted. Maybe a week, actually, until he got adjusted. Yeah, it was so fast. Exactly. So, like, there is that, too. Do not get the card based on that alone. But do know, if you like fun, if you like movement decks, where I think he'll be the best to uh, the Kingpin kind of style decks with Magneto, and or card might get buffed, Cannonball is going to be uh, a fun card, to, to say the least. So, uh, speaking of which, though, Alex, speaking of Meek, speaking of the content patch, we got, we got our monthly March balance or content patch. And uh, what did we say? We said we wanted to see new content come in the month. We did get it. We did get a little something, something, a couple of surprises for sure. I was definitely shocked about seeing all the features come out of nowhere. Uh, we definitely had, you know, no idea about that on our side over here. Let's start there. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about, let's start with the intern button. What's your thoughts? It's awesome. I'm so glad. And yeah, I think what you're saying is correct. Uh, very pleasantly surprised with the uh, the chunkiness of the content update, honestly. Like, we needed that. We really did need that. And we missed it last month because they delayed it, right? And that's fair with what the, the Christmas break and holiday break and everything. But yeah, we got a nice chunky update. And it's, yeah, there's balance changes. But like, who, who cares about the balance changes? We got some serious improvements to the game, and that's a good thing. Yeah, and the undo turn button awesome i just wish it was a different color because sometimes like i yes <laughs> i wish it yeah. went like like orange or something exactly right? but just don't go with the color that it's the intern but yeah a hundred percent i got confused myself this was a much much needed thing listen snap prides itself on being fast and i totally get that however the con of that is you want to be quick pace and you're making quick moves you see something it's your first thought done end it lock it and then you read the location again or then you look at one more card play and it just felt bad. It felt bad locking something in and sitting there 20 seconds and being like, I could have done something different. And you can do nothing. Whereas now, definitely you get to take a second back out. As a content creator, I love it too, man. Like it definitely, like we're commentating over a place. There's a lot to think about. Definitely, a, you know, a nice bone to be thrown there. Unexpected. And I'm here for it. Um, yeah, absolutely. And like, I, yeah, I make mistakes all the time. <laughs> we're like, when we're making content, like we're not like, a hundred percent right like because it's like we're, we're chatting we're talking we're doing stuff right and then like and then you look at your board you're like you're so rough for a second you're like oh what what am i doing like i've i've skipped turns turn ones with like ice man in my hand because i'm like talking to people and i'm not paying attention it's like so it's it's a great feature for us for sure but i think everyone benefits it also gets rid of the need competitively to rope turns like that's can't be understated too like roping turns was in theory the best way to approach a competitive game of snap now that's kind of not really the case yeah i just had an infinity run uh last season man with the patriot deck and on the last turn one health left battle five that's it everything on the line i misplayed and i couldn't i couldn't believe it i played it uh, i played uh, it was going to do the absorbing man of life play the bam bam i played america chavez first then absorbing man and I'm like, great, I'm getting two Chavez effects to end the game. Still won it, thank God. But it's, you know, there's big moments where you can make mistakes. I think it, it'll make competitive play better and casual play. I think it's a win overall. Uh, outside of that, we also finally got the graveyard in Snap. And uh, this is nice, man, because there was times where I just, I don't play a ton of Snap mobile-wise just because I'm, I'm making content on my computer. But it's nice that we finally have this on mobile because it felt like a pretty big disadvantage not having it. It, it definitely is like it's a great improvement it's still kind of like wonky getting into it and stuff but like again the ui like there's not a lot of space right like marvel snaps a very clean game and if you want to access that graveyard then you just it's a button or two away and sure but it is a good addition to the game 100 percent. i think it does even the playing field because a lot of people are using untapped and other type of deck trackers and now people on mobile it's a little fair at the very least, right? And uh, especially as we get some more complex cards, like I can't, <laughs> there was a moment where untapped wasn't working after the patch and I had, uh, I was playing like Iron Light or something. I was like, whoa, 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 this is actually a huge disadvantage because I'm not even sure. I don't remember what's in my deck, right? And it's like, you get so used to that and it's like, oh yeah, that's what mobile players feel like all the time. It is an advantage, isn't it? Dude, Blob, Lockjaw, Jubilee, Iron Lad. I mean, there's just so many cards that you really need to look into your deck. And and uh, yeah, no no question there. So glad that's come in. It is a little wonky. I think they're trying to keep the UI clean. 
but yeah. it also is just a lot of clicking and whatnot. And now you have the emotes and all that. So uh, definitely not uh, not mad about it, though, that's for sure. And then Alex Kocha, the custom borders and probably the more exciting news behind it, the investment into all this, right? They, they've, they've stated that this is just kind of part one to this and that there's going to be a lot more coming to this, which I think I got a little excited about overall. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's a great change. Uh, I, I find it confusing as hell, like the original UI of it. I'm like, what is happening here? And I was so kind of disappointed that like you can't mix and match. Like I have an inked effect unlocked and I get a red Kirby on a foil. Why can't I put the Kirby on the ink? Like I wanted it so bad. There's so many variants in the game. Like there are so many variants in the game. At least let me do like swap amongst a given variant. You know what I mean? Like, is that too much to ask? No, for sure. And the way that it was kind of said, like I had to read it like 19 times before I'm like, oh, it's not that. Like, it, it took a second. And I think they did say that that's, that's what they're working towards or okay. something like that. Yeah, I think that's the the goal is that they're trying to get that out alongside just, like, more splits and, and, and more, like, backs and, and all that stuff, which I think is, like, it's yeah. time. It's been, a, it's been a year and a half. I think, like, the crackle on a gold on, like, a perfect color still hits. It's still, it's still a dopamine hit. But, like, it's time. Let's go and see some more backgrounds, man. Let's get some more stuff going and, and, and just create even more, like, diversity in collections. I think they kind of hinted at the idea of perhaps there even being consumables you can apply to variants and specific cards, uh, which could be cool. That could be in like the collector's reserves, for instance, to spice up the rewards there, which would be nice. Ultimately, if this is the first step, I'm for it. It's it's an improvement in every shape of the way. Like every single way, it's an improvement. The only thing is like, I find, <laughs> I'm like, what card do I have to upgrade? Like now it feels weird because you can automatically pick which, which card border you have, even if you haven't upgraded the card yet. So I'm like, why am I even going to put, like, I basically it just means you have to, if you're going to split something, you just have to invest 1500 credits every time. Cause like the incremental updates don't mean anything. I will say I like that. I love that the 3d FX stays in the, and all that, even within yes. the frame. Like I wasn't expecting I like that. that. I'd be, I thought they were just going to let us change the color and there's some cars that look much better, like much better. And so there is some instances I definitely have gone back on some splits, like, you know, uh, an onslaught that I had forever that I finally get a. Uh, upgrade and, and change him and it, it just it feels good there's brood carnage i had a lot of cards that i just use their base with a red flame frame or an orange frame because that's what looked best uh but lastly before the balance we also had the gold pass which i saw and i was like okay carry on guys uh if you're wondering why to get a uh, video i i was uh told i was told that the patch was delayed and uh it wasn't and it's a uh, crack of crack of dawn over here when that happened uh so i did not get to uh get mine out in time but with that, I saw the gold pass. I did record what I thought of it. What do you think of it? It's fine. Like, it's what? I think it was 7 bucks Canadian and net, like, a pretty large chunk of gold. you got to log in every day. You're probably logging in every day if you're watching this podcast, right? I got no issue with that. I think it's fine value. It's just that make sure the gold's worth something. That's all. We're starting to see a lot of, um, like, I know data metrics that they look at, I'm sure, is, like, daily users. And so, like... I don't know about you, we got that sick Thor variant for free if you just play like out of nowhere or whatever. And so like stuff like that, where like you would need to log in, uh, which I think I mentioned last episode about calendars. Like I was like, oh, we don't have any in Snap. And then this is kind of its first like form of it. Uh, the value, the bank for the buck is the best that, that, that there is as far as that investment. It's kind of nice that uh, there, there's that option if so be it, but there needs to be more places to, to, to spend the gold as we've alluded to. So like it's a... It's great on one end that we've got that, but the other end it's like, all right, cool. Like, let's get those splits then. Let's get the, what? bring it, bring the content. We're ready to, you know, uh, spend the gold or whatever. But uh, yeah, so not bad there. Uh, anything else before the buffs, nurse? Was that, oh, we had the voice line. Did you hear Deadpool's voice line, dude? I, no, I haven't yet. Like, I actually don't, I don't know. I haven't heard it yet. I haven't played any Destroy. I don't think anybody's playing Destroy right now, actually. I've been playing so much X-Men. So he <laughs> says, hey, I need to change my underwear when, <laughs> when you... When you play like it's classic Deadpool. It's it's uh I love it. I love that they like let him be the character that he is. And then the Moon Girl one I think was really cool too. Just like a, a fun uh fun flavor flavor. We had a lot of visuals uh upgraded and locations, which funny, I feel like a lot of the locations on the list I'm seeing more of. It said you'd see less of them. I'm seeing more of them. Uh and it looks like they kind of targeted what, like RNG locations more than anything, yeah. I think to some degree, I think they targeted destroy locations too. Like to destroy beneficial ones because you know, there's a classic thing where it's like I'm playing a destroy deck. Hey, look at this! Every single location benefits me. I think they tried to resolve that slightly, and I think I listen. I'm all about location changes. I kind of laugh at people like, oh, they killed Subterranean. I'm like, guys, Subterranean still sucks. Like, come on, let's be honest. Yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, it's between that and like just the 
you know, Camp Lehigh or whatever, where it's like, you might get a Captain America and they get a rogue and it's just a dramatic way to lose. So I think they are dialing back from those a little bit and uh, certainly, you know, Crimson Cause. There's a lot on the list and uh, we can go ahead and uh, put that whole thing up now for you guys to see if you did miss that. Uh, but outside of that, we had ourselves some card adjustments. There's kind of a lot to break down, go through, Alex. But let's start with Elsa Bloodstone, which we kind of... I don't want to say we call, called it because I think it was fairly obvious once Luke Cage had his day. Uh, we'll get rid of Cannonball here on screen. Elsa became exactly what we thought. Uh, yeah, no, we literally called it. Like, you can say we called it because we did. We called another one coming up, too. I know. I, it always feels good to be like, this is what we want and this is what we end up getting. Um, I know there were people that were kind of getting used to the two-cost Elsa in, in some of the builds and stuff, and they were kind of sad about it. I do think, though, that ultimately, like, it's not hard to fill your locations up. So, you know, effectively, you're getting a potential, what, 3-9 uh, in, in total value, even more so if you're able to play with the with the, with the with the baby shark and the night crawlers and whatnot. And, hey, we might see more Elsa this week with Cannonball because all that's kind of in that whole deck sphere. Yeah, no, I mean, this change makes perfect sense. Uh, I think they're clearly starting to iron out the idea that, listen, three-cost cards can have board-wide effects. It provides consistency with the design of the game, and I am absolutely all for it. Like, there's nothing I think there's nothing wrong with this, right? Exactly what you said with Luke Cage. Board wide. Kyra, board wide. Perfect. Get it out of the two costs. It was too powerful there. It should be just right on uh, three costs, and if you need a little extra power, you got the dials. My favorite change, though, is what I want to go to next. By far, my favorite change. And I just... They didn't do much outside of kind of bring it back to where he was, but a little bit better, in my opinion. I love it, dude. Cable is represents what I like to do in Marvel Snap. So now he's a two cost, three power. He went down from the three cost, which is terrible for Cable and, and the way that he worked. Now you you steal a card. You legit steal a card from your opponent's deck. You're not copying anything. You take it. And the power that can give you, especially in something like Conquest, is huge. But also it gives you potential new play lines. And if you know Snap, you're rewarded heavily when playing something like Discard and you pull a Dracula, whatever that might be. I think he's great stat it, and I do think he's a good plug and play card. I like Cable. I always have. Uh, I he was he was originally a two two, by the way. So this is actually an improvement based off of the original. But like honestly, at a two three, taking a card from their deck that's pretty impactful. And like if you you get snap equity from there too. Like if you snap after you cable them, and they're like, did they just take my Shuri? Did they just take my like? You're in their head, right? You're in their head in a very interesting way. So I like the design. I think it does exactly what Marvel Snap wants to do. Yeah, I like it. I like this change a lot. Yeah, I think I think uh, the one that is more, uh, I would say, it still needs to be tested, and I don't think it ever will be. I think people are kind of scared to test it to a huge degree. I I think it's cool. I just, at the end of the day, I don't know if it's going to make the 12 slots, right? But uh, Mantis, guys, is being uh, shifted, and she is now essentially copying. It's like a Nico effect of your opponent. So you're copying a card that they played at the location, so... They said the example is Venom. You can take that if you expect a Venom, which in that instance obviously makes sense. But think about all the things that have to align. You have to have the RNG of pulling her. You have to have the RNG of playing against a deck that you would want to do this against. And then you have to have the RNG of just guessing correctly, which if you're anything like me, you just whiff at every single time. What do you think of Mantis? I think it's poo. Just give it some. This I'm. This is so cringy. I can't do it, man. The whole guessing. Like I get the whole Guardians of the Galaxy thing, but like it just it feels bad. The guessing thing just doesn't doesn't feel uh, good. But what I can tell you is Meek got himself a change. And Alex, I'll let you lead with this one. Yeah, we actually said we literally said Meek would be so much damn better if you could just you know get the optionality over the movement. And that's exactly what we got. We literally got exactly that. And the card's good. It has statistically gone up to like seven power on a regular basis. Now you get the Nightcrawler effect. Beautiful. Like this is a legitimately good card now. Yeah. The, the Like the getting the discard immediately is nice. Like definitely there was a lot of like anti-synergy with those decks. And it made no sense because that's the only place you're going to play them. And like you don't want anti-synergy in a archetype locked card. It just felt stupid. But now you also get to move that car. I mean, that is tremendous as far as being able to now work with Proxima a bit more and be like, okay, okay, I want to move it because Proxima landed here. I'll move it over here. So definitely uh, he has earned his spot a bit more as this kind of unique discard card. And again, as we say all the time, a pretty tight list of cards. I loved it. Uh, the Meek one definitely uh, had me excited. The other ones in here, man, we'll get to, you know, the Leech and the Time Stone, but like, I don't know about you, both the M'Baku and the Yondu one, uh, 
what are we, what are we what are we doing here? Yeah, they're head scratchers. The Mbaku one, I'm like, really? That's not why. That's not why we play Mbaku. Like, that's not what we need in Mbaku. Just keep him out of our hand or something, or give him the angel effect. Right? He can jump in from our hand. Like, give him that. And out of this, I'm not sold on. I don't think the needles moved at all on Mbaku. No, I like. I would. You know how he like? If there's too much space, he pops in. I don't. If it, if you haven't seen that, he literally goes ah, and he says whatever. I would rather just bombard my opponent with that animation if I play Mbaku. That's all he does. I don't care. That's win for me. Like, just an annoy your opponent card is better than uh, what, what we have here, probably. And Yondu got nerfed somehow. I don't see this at all as something... Not that we were even playing Yondu that much, but it's funny because they kind of made him now do the only reason why you didn't want to risk playing him before. Like, you... You don't want to thin your opponent's deck from cards that are kind of lower in the slot. Maybe they don't need. Now that's all he does, dude. What was this? Yeah, this was a kind of rough change, but I think in their patch note, they suggested that this is actually a change in advance of a card that's coming out in the future that'll be synergistic with Yondu. So it seems as though this is like, a, okay, yeah, we're killing Yondu right now, but it'll make sense like a month or two from now. But it, did you really need to do that though? I don't know. No one was playing him anyways, you said, but like, I don't know. I think, I don't think we have the full picture yet. Do you think this is the whole Baron Zemo thing? Because you get to draw, you get to, I think, play the lowest cost card in your opponent's deck on your side. I'm, I'm wondering if they think like, okay, you thin the deck out first then you do that maybe yeah i'm pretty sure that's what it is because now you're improving the odds you get a better card from Baron okay now. all right you know what if, if there's more of that then fine but it's uh i don't know didn't come at the, the best time i guess for him but uh we're not playing him anyway and then lastly we got a couple of nerfs uh or more nerfs shall i say what do you think about leech and kind of how they handled this card as a whole and look at I'll, I'll even change up the variant for you what do you think of uh what they did with leech i mean i think they're giving him a timeout I think they're saying, Leech, your time's come. Shut your pie hole. Sit in the corner. Like, we're, we're done with you for a bit. And when your time comes and people clamor for your return, we'll, we'll bring you back. Because there's going to come a time. We don't want to admit it as Marvel Snap players. But there's going to come a time in the future where we're like, damn, imagine if we had Leech right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because he does have an important role to play for as a release valve, right? We just don't like to think about that because he's so damn annoying. But for now, I think he's taking a timeout. And sometimes you put your kid in timeout and they didn't learn anything. And that is the case with Thanos, in my opinion. Uh, they th Now, I do like the change. I will say that I, I like the change. The time stone, if you guys don't know, uh, is the next card that you draw. It's the America Chavez effect. But the next card that you draw has now negative one cost. Kind of like a like a shocker mixed with America Chavez. And uh, I like it. I do. I think that was a healthy change. Did it do anything, though? No, it didn't do anything, but like it is a good change. It definitely weakens the archetype because it, it uh, yeah, it's just, it's the appropriate change. However, it doesn't offset adding a great card into the mix and like Mockingbird and Call Obsidian and pretty much everything else you've added to this deck over the past month and a half. It just doesn't compensate for that. But I think the change does make sense because it was way too reliable to, to ramp out major things. And again, this is another point of saying like we can maybe talk about pro x getting power back because time stone to pro x was like one of the worst things in snaps history because you knew a life was coming next right so you neuter this a little bit and so pro x might be able to get a look if you're the warriors and you have a just stack roster and someone's got to sit out like you're fine because you've got plenty of other good players and that's kind of how it felt here um it's just at this point if you look back there's just been so many changes remember when loki was dominant and there's like 10 like the cable nerf right they were trying to figure out Loki without addressing Loki. And again, I think Glenn does a great job. But in this case, it's like, I feel like Thanos had so many people take a hit. And it's getting to the point that they're trying to say they're going to put him in timeout. But he's not going, man. He's like, he refuses to go. And uh, it, he, he's going to be a problem moving forward. Because there's even more cards coming out that can continue to help him. I would make the argument, though, that, like, I think that when you talk about putting cards in timeout, Leech and Thanos are different. Like, I, I don't know. You don't want Thanos in timeout. Like, that is That's such a great it, card for the game. You know what I mean? Like, it is such a unique way to play. He's an iconic character. You don't want to put him in timeout. Like, who cares about Leech? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, they're on the notes. They were like, he's been, we expect him to be bad, but that's okay because he's been good. And it's like, no, he's still good. But, yes, I... I agree. I love, dude, I love Thanos. And again, I'm all for like an iconic character, iconic villain, probably, you know, the most iconic, uh, not or being good. Like we want that to be a good card and snap. It's just been a long while now. And I know a lot of people are, are probably, uh, you know, wanting to see other decks to go against, but all in all, that is going to be the patch. And with 
the six cost talk of Thanos. Alex and I are going to rank all of the six cost cards in Marvel Snap from best to worst. So we pick up here at the six cost tier list. Again, we had great remarks about the five cost. So we decided to do it again. Let us know if you guys like it. I think this is a cool way to talk about like every card in Snap, uh, even briefly and, uh, and, and, and get a little friendly debating in here. Uh, we're going to go in alphabetical order and shoot through these, man. It's crazy how many six cost cards we've gotten over the days uh, of Snap being out. And we start with Agatha, my friend. Agatha Harkness. Has she SDF, done enough? Right? Has she done? I was about to say, has she done enough? Has enough cards come out to get her to go to C? You're saying she's straight to F? She's got to be straight to F. Come on. Like, I listen, I know you had the run. The famous cozy Agatha run. One of my favorite videos, honestly. It's so good. But like, let's be honest, man. We also don't want Agatha to be a legit meta contender. Because then like all the bots are farming. Like it's, uh, it messes up all the stats. Like, it's, like, I don't know about you. When I go to untap, I filter like Agatha x out. Like I don't want to see Agatha stats because I don't know what's going on with that. Like why are there like 67% win rate Agatha decks? They must be farming each other or something. There's something fishy going on there because they're definitely not farmed. Uh, they're not like getting these wins off. Like these Kzar decks. Yeah, I'm seeing those too. I'm like, what the hell? Yeah, it's weird. Eh? She's better than she was. But yeah, she's still left. Like she, she is, she's gone up in value. But again, it's a card that uh, like as the biggest lover of Agatha, and I think she's she she she's won my heart. She's still she's still just not comparable to the ones on the list. So I agree there, man. Let's move on to uh, probably another easy one in Eliath. Uh, we can both say pretty confidently S tier, uh, S tier here. And Eliath is such a strong debated card. Seriously, from content creators to players alike, I see people just either hate him, want him deleted from the game, or they like what he brings. Uh, I guess this is not the time for that discussion, but he is an easy S tier as far as what he does, right? Yeah, I agree 100%. Definitely S tier, probably a lower end on S tier, who's much higher before back. Remember his release? Oh my gosh. But like, I don't, like his current iteration is fine, but I still don't like it. I don't like its effect on Ghost. I don't like its effect on Invisible Woman. Like, I think it has this like, it's kind of ruining cards in the periphery in a way that I don't think is designed. Like, we're just happy with where it is right now. Like, it's not ruining the meta, but I still think it needs a little bit of a look. It was like what Leech was for a long time. Like, he kind of just like, it was like, oh, we could tolerate it. Let's get back yeah. to it. That's probably what's going to happen with Eliath. Uh, next up is Apoc, which I feel like when we did do a tier list before like this, I feel like he kind of just always ends up in B tier, no? I could see him being low A. Eh? Like, I, he's probably a high B low a card yeah I, I this is gonna be the definition of we will move him as we go along i think there's so many good six costs like we had like a, a good amount of b's last time so we'll see if that ends up being too too populated but yeah he he does his job great we love him but does he kind of go over the and, and really what it is is its versatility right like i think that's obviously holding him back like even in hella let's say an alternate to discard you just you're not playing him uh, all that much arnim zola i'm gonna let you kick off Arnim Zola I feel like he's a C card not because I don't like him but because he lacks versatility versatility see I feel like he's he's rather versatile I see B tier for me was like the the definite like I felt really good about that you like C tier I listen I I like Zola I like Zola a lot but I just feel like a you see him coming like oh it's Black Panther by himself I wonder what's gonna happen right it's like I feel like there is a very readable play um, and it's kind of the same thing with Apocalypse, right? Like Apocalypse never catches people by surprise the way Eliot does. Like you just math out the Apocalypse play. You know exactly what it is. So Zola, I'll accept low B. I accept it. I was I was gonna go with what you said here. I was gonna go with C. I just I have uh, between like the Venom plays, the Ravona synergy in there now, a little bit of chaos with he's won me enough and I play him enough that I have him in B. Uh, but I do I do see there'd be plenty of people that would probably put him in C. I can understand that. Uh, next up is Blob, and do we have another easy S tier? You know what? I, I'm i actually kind of lower on Blob than most. I would accept S, but I don't think he's as good as Eliath. I almost feel like he's a good A card now. Like, I, if I have a choice between Magneto and Eliath, I lean towards Magneto. Like, not because, because of the disruption factor. Like, I, I, okay, I've been getting 15 power Blobs. I've been getting 16 power Blobs. Nothing to scoff at, right? Like, nothing to scoff at power-wise. But that's all he is. It's a stick. It's a stick of stats, whereas Magneto does all these different things. Doctor Doom has access to different locations. I think Blob is a little weak. It's much weaker than it was before, obviously. But um, I would accept S, but I could see the argument for him being an A. Yeah, I, I like him in S. Just I feel like he is a game winner. Like, he, he can win you the games. Like, there's so many times where I'm going against a Thanos 
uh, Thanos deck, I did everything right. And I'm like, I still lose the blob here. Like, there's still nothing yeah. I can do. Cannonball, funny enough, we didn't mention this. Because it's very niche, you have to, like, not have priority. You have to guess where they're going to play it. Like, I get that he's a can he's going to be the blob counter, but also, like, I don't really, I don't, nah, I don't think it's going to be it's as... not actually, yeah. Yeah, it's, like, cool on paper, but, it, you know, it just doesn't actual out. Uh, but, yeah, for now, I would say S. We'll see what happens, but he's one of the best in my book. Death is not a six cost. I always hate this talk, but it is. Let's get real. Uh, where are we putting death? I would say she's probably a high B. Like, I could see her being A, but I, I would think high B because if you think about it, it on her own, she, first of all, you can't just play death on her own. You need to actually synergize with other cards to make the card happen. I like it in discard because obviously the target discard effect of it being an eight cost will protect Hela and stuff like that. But we're playing Corvus now anyway, so who cares about that? I, I can see her being A or B, but I think low A, low A, high B. I feel like death is probably low A in my book. Yeah, I feel like they're... Just honestly, because of Destroy, like because of where Destroy's at and how good the archetype is, the hell of C, so she's not like pinned to just one deck. I, I, I definitely get your argument. This will be a cool list to do because I do feel like we might have a good amount of dramatic change uh, of the placements here. Uh, that takes us to Destroyer next. He got a power increase, Alex. Is he C tier? Yeah, he's C tier. He didn't like the power increase. I I am happy with, but uh, the decks have not shown to be good enough. Like you're not playing Warpath armor anymore. Like it's just not like we've progressed so far past that. It's still a good card. I still like it. I still like the the Shuri into Nimrod into Destroyer line. Like I still enjoy that, but it's uh it's just not there. There's just too much. Yeah, too much. Uh, th there's too many locations that can mess with you. Like Blob. Let's say if he gets pulled down by Sakar, you're like, damn. There goes some of my deck. Destroyer could just ruin everything that just happened, right? And so, like, even with, like, a Gladiator, like, there's just a lot of just bad negative things. Uh, I do agree. C tier feels about right. Dr. Doom, we can we can be we can be quicker here. I think he will take over the, the top spot as of now for the S tier. The, the catch-all catch card and, and, and one that Snap felt weird when he had the four power bots like it was just a weird time and, and i definitely think he deserves to be as that anchor of average power five i don't know what i was gonna say there but did the anchor just a good card yeah a great card and stat he's the baseline six card and i agree he yeah. definitely deserves to be s tier uh next up galactus this will be a fun one to rank where do you have galactus hi for me I like Galactus. I like where he is right now. I'm. Uh, I've been getting to infinite using Galactus. Like I really like the the Galactus and Nihilus uh, decks. I think they're phenomenal. I think they're some of the best decks in the game that no one's playing. I like Galactus where he is. Um, he's often a surprise piece. I don't think a lot of people like. I'm. I'm snapping on games. I'm like, buddy. Like the location is locked at negative four power. Like I'm gonna Galactus you. Like don't stay in this game. And they do. And I'm like, okay, well, here we are, I guess, right? I, people aren't counting on Galactus. You're not seeing it much as a meta share, and I think that gives it a chance to steal cubes. I agree. I think Galactus is at a good spot. I do. I think he's yep. at a fine spot right now, and that deck is competitive. I don't know if it's more of a Nihilus doing a, a, some of the heavy lifting there over Galactus sometimes, but I, I think that he is right where they need to be, and, and uh, let's leave him there for now. But he is a good card. I probably have him lower A, to be fair, but I do think he's a good card. Uh, in snap, certainly better than Apoc, Arnhem, everybody below him there. Uh, next up, Giganto, and I've got him probably, honestly, might be lower than damn Agatha. I mean, it's like right there with Agatha, in my opinion. When you look at now what we have, you said it earlier, we have Cole Obsidian as a freaking 10 power card. Guess what? You get a pick where you play him outside of the one drop thing. The left side only, we've moved on from this era in snap, I feel like, and he's just been left behind. Yeah, he needs to be like 16 power, like a destroyer to make more sense. And he's only used in decks where like you want to discard him or like he's just a 14 power stat stick anyways. So he has his uses there, but you're not like the whole can't play uh, mid or right thing. It doesn't make sense. Like it's it's a weak card. It's enough. And even in those decks, man, like even in like Dracula dump and whatnot, like you are like, ah, you know what? I'd rather go Magneto because then at least I can like shoot. I, I lose out on two power, but I get to pick where I get to play. And I have usually a thing that works, you know, for me. I agree. One of the worst cards. Heimdall still feels like a C to me, Alex. Would you agree? Yep. That's exactly where Heimdall belongs. Okay. Yeah, we won't say much about him. I think it's obvious. He did get a power increase. His days may, you know, improve eventually, but we have been saying that now about a year now, and it just hasn't gone that way. Hella. Hella, hella. 
What do you got her? I, I kind of want to say low S, but I think she's minimum high A. Because, like, realistically, like, Hella itself is, like, she's an archetype defining card. Like, it's so random. I don't know, man. The cube rate speaks for itself. Hella steals cubes. It's got to be S. Even though it, I get... I totally get what you're saying. Like, there, there is, like, what is she... You know, is she doing everything herself? No, but she still has one of the most unique powerful effects in snap and because of that I, I agree she may be even higher certainly we're making this video like if we were to look at this a year ago it's so we would be shocked putting hella here mm -hmm. the, really just a meme card then hella carrier has there been enough done to warrant this out of f tier i think if there's a d tier that's where i like it uh, the, the i like hella carrier i like what they've done with it but i will say you, you get a little clunky with those decks, right? Like most of the time you'd rather go pure discard. You'd rather go pure collector. It's not that it's a bad deck. I just feel like it could be a tougher one to place. Right now, the collector discard, I think has a percentage, a single percentage advantage over the standard Corvus Hella discard list, which is crazy to me. The exact deck you're talking about, collector, Hella carrier. So by that, it's in and of itself, like I think it needs to be at least low B, which is funny because like, it's beating Apocalypse statistically, but I don't think it's as good as Apocalypse is. Like, it's just that particular deck is working for it. And so, like, the card itself could be C, low B, probably high C, maybe. But it's kind of interesting to think that the deck with Collector, it's actually getting the job done, honestly. It's hard to, for me to look at the stats and say, put them up there uh, in the B. I have them at high C for now, but I agree, like, once we get this B built, if we look at these and we're like, ah, it's it, these are supporting cards like that is, then I agree. I, I Again, talk about a really, like, good rework for a card. I, I thought it was yeah. much more appropriate and definitely has some synergy now with a lot more. And we are starting to get into some more hybrid builds that are being more consistent as either or play lines. So I do agree there. Uh, Hulk, let's face it, guys. We're not going to even talk about Patriot Hulk. We're just talking high Evo Hulk. That's really the Hulk of today. Clearly the S tier. Is it the is it the top of this? Is it below Doom and then everything else? Do you have it above Doom? What do you think? I have it above Doom, and if I'm getting picky, I'd I'd swap a Lyth and blah, but that's just me. But yeah, I I think it's literally one of the best six drops in the game for sure. And I think one of the uh, slept on things, especially with Hope Summers, is that if you float an extra energy at the end of the game, he plus twos again, right? Which is I think catches a lot of people by surprise. I, I like the Hulk. I think like this was a card that like Vanilla Hulk was basically never played yeah. into one of the best cards in Snap. I agree. I think Hulk is uh, so good that there might be a card coming out just to counter him. So like I completely, yeah. completely agree there uh, with the release of like something like Kyra. It's made it even more difficult. Uh, Noel is next on our list. And Noel is a tough one, Alex, because I think both of us could feel pretty good about putting him at the top of A. But he also is like is that defining card in that archetype, right? Like he really does just win, win and win. And he feels like an anchor. Is he top of A though? Is that where we have him? It's funny when I play with uh, Null, I often feel like when I'm deck building, I kind of want to cut him. But anytime I've cut him, he's felt, I'm like, oh, I need Hull. I need Null back. Like this was a massive mistake, right? So like he definitely is one of the cards you need in destroy. I tend to think death is more valuable but I could see why Null is like, it's it's such a good card and it's, I don't know. Between Death and Null, I think I take Death, but I can see Null being on aggregate better. The threat of both of them is important to destroy. Like the, the opponent yeah. needs to think both of them are in your deck, even if you don't have both of them, right? Like I, there has been I, countless destroy games I've left probably, even though they don't have either, but I have to assume they do. I have to assume they do. And so yes, uh, definitely destroy is such a, a well-oiled machine. It's tough to take out any of these cogs to get the full working, uh, you know, Titan that it is. Leader, in my definition, is one that I would fight for to go and be, even though I get its usage. I, I, I can't help but tell every time I end up playing leader in a deck, I'm pretty satisfied with the, how the deck performs and, and what you can pull out. We're getting more and more decks that are just relying on that, bam, six drop, huge power play at the end. He lost that kind of that kind of kick when we were in that meta that was just like dropping low cost at the end, right? But now that we're kind of shifting back here, it feels like he could earn himself low B, but you know, you you, you can convince me to go see if that's what you want to do. 
I, I would definitely lean towards C. I mean, like Helicarrier, for instance, as the barometer is in like a legit meta deck and leader. I don't remember the last time I saw leader unironically. You know what I mean? It's like, so um, I, I definitely see what you're saying. Probably an underappreciated card, honestly, but a little more powerful than I think we expect it to be. But uh, I, I don't think it cracks B yet. Like, I don't think it's doing what Apocalypse or Zola are doing and sure as hell is not doing what Helicarrier is doing. So in terms of the meta right now, it's definitely C. Um, what I will say uh, that I do like about him, though, to end on him, is that, like, Helicarry, the, the decks and stuff are great. I mean, but, like, it's with a great archetype. Whereas, like, yeah. you have all these things that are just killer with the deck. Whereas, like, Leader's just independent. He's just by himself. He he, he comes with the package deal. There's no other subscriptions, right? So that's that would be my argument there. But uh, Magneto, I think we can firmly say, is an S tier. You would probably have him higher than I have him in S tier. I think he's not above... Uh, I don't even know if I put him above Blob. I'll be honest, man. I, Blob, it, 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 it's close. Nah, I would put him above Blob. I think mainly because yeah. the deck diversity, you don't need high power cards. You don't need anything with him. And the counter metric, he's an offense and defense card. We've talked about that. And because of that sole reason, I do think he's right below probably a Lyoth. I would... <laughs> Yeah, he's he's probably below Eliath, definitely over Helen Blob. Yeah, I like this. And there's, I mean, this is, there's times where I'm like, I need a high power six drop. And usually used to default to Dr. Doom. I'm often still taking Magneto, like depending on the meta, right? So like Magneto is truly a remarkable card and has been for the longest time. This is feeling like a really good top end event. Like so far, I'm looking at the list and I'm pretty happy about it. I think we've got ourselves a pretty good one. Uh, next up is Odin. And I always feel like Odin and our next card Onslaught, both these guys, we'll go with Odin first. These are tough to rank, right? Because like the games you've won with them, you remember because they are over the top winning cards, right? Like you get the Odin combo, it's over. You onslaught with a living tribunal, done. Where do you have them? Let's go Odin first. I mean, I feel like Odin's probably a B card. I do like it as an A card, but I think realistically it's a B card. Um, it needs the full supporting cast for it to really do anything. That That is what Odin does. It needs the support. So definitely B for me. I'm okay with that. What about onslaught? I think he's a. I think Onslaught ends up being the same thing. It's a B card. Like it's absolutely fair. Um, again, needs the supporting cast, but that's what they do well. I'm decent B card for sure. Does this, does this feel good to you? Onslaught one over Odin, both over Arnim. Yep. Okay. Yep. I, I would probably swap Odin and Onslaught, but that's nitpicky. I don't care. Uh, I think the high end of Onslaught right now in Tribunal is better than the high end of Odin, just in that one deck regard. But the usage of Odin is more. So it, it is yeah, a that's fair. Tick for tack. I agree. Uh, <laughs> Listen, let's let's be realistic. We can like the card, but Orca in his usage. Go ahead. He's a C card, fine. But like there was that time where when Miss Marvel was absolutely cracked, where he would get you to like 21 power by himself because you just drop him her, drop him into the Miss Marvel lane. So yeah, Orca. Also, I watched Wakanda Forever. I was so sad Orca wasn't in it. I was 100 percent expecting Orca to be in it. I was like, where's Orca? I saw Tuma, I saw Namor, no Orca. And on Netflix or whatever, Disney Plus, whatever, it's like, no, did not like it. I'm kidding. I did like it. It was a good movie. Two but I was down. missing Orca. Yeah, I feel like uh, I feel like he might be hard to, you know, like, I feel like there's some heroes that are hard to make into the MCU, right? But if they could do Art of Zola, damn it, they could do Orca. I want to see uh, Vin Diesel as Orca or something. Uh, next up, we've got She-Hulk. And you're going to talk me out of it. I have I have She-Hulk in the S tier, personally. I think she's one of the best, most versatile great cards catch them all do you want her an a though no why why would i talk you out of an s tier she hulk that's exactly i, don't know, where I, was I feel like it. i was high up on it okay you have her in s tier okay okay yeah I'm, I'm glad to hear okay dude where though on this list i would put her exactly where you have her right now yeah that actually feels pretty good i think that's about right i mean you could say give or take like depending on hella and how she's you know doing maybe 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 you could squeeze above her sometimes but yeah i think this is a good list i think Time has shown over and over, She-Hulk's great. It doesn't even matter about Mobius coming in the game. She-Hulk is great. And with Hope Summers, it made her even better, man, which is crazy. Pixie made her better. Like, all the cards have come out and just made her uh, work seamlessly. We have a lot of cards that um, they could be played early, and they come with some condition. And her condition definitely feels the best to meet because there's decks that want that condition done, right? Yeah. And audio listeners, that's uh, end of S. The low end of S is where uh, she all called ended up going. Thank you. Scars next, our uh, newest six cost card. And uh, where do we've got Scar, man? Is he 
Is he making the threshold of B? Is he down to C with Helicarrier? What do you think? I mean, I, I lean towards low B. I would accept low B for Scar, but I can see the, the ch I can see the argument for high C. I think when he came out, it was high C. With the cards we have available now, we're getting closer to like, hey, you can start playing them. You can start yeah. playing them and feeling a little bit better here, uh, especially with Hope Summers. You can cheat out bigger cards. Obsidian Cole came out. Uh, even Pixie, to a degree, you can discount, you know, maybe his new four cost down to like, there's a lot of ways to play him out, cheat him out. Uh, I agree. Spectrum. Spectrum. Man, they've done a lot. You know, kind of not really, but a little bit for Spectrum. I probably have her above Helicarrier, but I have her in C. Yeah, definitely a C card, which is unfortunate. But they like they added a little bit of love to, uh, you know, Ant-Man, which helps that archetype a little bit. But as a whole, if you go full ongoing, first of all, it's highly readable, highly susceptible to Enchantress. But yeah, C is where she belongs. We're starting to get congested because we know Thanos is definitely going in the S tier. And I think we can firmly say he's probably, uh, not probably, he is going to be the, the, the king yes. of the throne. He's the king of the throne up here. And uh, we do have a really good bell curve going on outside of A tier. Uh, he definitely A tier is uh, is struggling. And we do, you know, usually want to reserve S for the top of the top. And if, if we so did, we would probably move down, you know, the latter four of them. I would say probably Magneto starting there. Uh, the other ones really feel like they're at the top of the game. Thanos, we just talked about him. Don't have to say much more. He's king of snap at the moment. Infinite, though, where do you have him? I mean, Infinite, I can see being low B, maybe high C. I Actually, you know what? I'm going to say he's his C. Even when I've been making She-Hulk decks, I'll be honest with you, uh, with Hope Summers and with all the ramp we have available, we are often in a situation where Hulk is getting to 20 power without the need to be skipping turns, honestly. Like, Hulk is almost always 20 power, 18 power, close, right? Why do I need to skip turns with uh, and try to run that infinite play? Like, don't get me wrong, it still is a use, but I feel like Hulk is kind of uh, knocking at the gates of infinite. I, I understand where you're coming from. I think Black Knight and Hella and Drac Dump, it's it's yeah. like a win. It's a like if yeah. you get the blade, if you have, if they have the Black Knight and the blade comes down, it's if it's like, hey, GG, we'll see you next time, right? And so I, I get what you're saying in the traditional sense, which is kind of the only way we used to play them. Uh, I have a hard time not putting him in and be probably above Onslaught even. Like, in just his overall, like, where he's used across the game right now. Um, but, yeah, as far as, like, the skipping the turn play and, and, and trying to get, like, you know, the She-Hulk play with that, there's just almost more reliable lines, to your point. And, and I would agree there. So, uh, you know, mixing kind of both there. Do you think that's okay? Yeah, I agree 100%. Actually, my initial assessment was too narrow. You're right. He's being used in Black Knight. He's being used in Hela. He's being used pretty much everywhere else. Not necessarily the traditional she not style deck. So, no, your assessment's correct. All right. Next up, we've got uh, two more. We have Living Tribunal. And um, I got him probably uh, kind of helping this A tier out a little bit. And uh, probably yep. right here at that, you know, just does his role in the deck. And it's a tough one to beat. It is. No, I 100% agree. Definitely an A card. Uh, it's, it's good. It's one of the few cards that can vertically beat Hela, right? It's a good card. I feel like he, uh, like, I like that his deck exists, right? Because if there's other things going on, like, his deck can just win, and then it keeps the game balanced in terms of, like, tech cards and things. Ultron, I, I got, you know, I got to play him again this week. I'm so happy. I love Ultron. I wish he was better. I really do. I think he's a good card at times or whatever, right? But for the most part, you're pretty much coping. Is he... Ooh, man. Because you can win with him, man. You can win with him. I would have him above Destroyer is where I would put him, personally. Yep, I agree. I would put him above uh, Leader, personally, but I can see your I He's better than Leader, come on. Yeah, I agree. I think I'd play, yeah, especially because that archetype is just so much stronger. So that is going to be the ranking. I mean, I think, again, we could probably knock down, maybe potentially She-Hulk down to A, but outside of that, like, this feels like uh, a list that we could both agree on. Nothing feels out of the ordinary uh, massively, and even in the placement department. Uh, but these are fun, man. Again, it... It lets us look at an overview of all the cards, the current meta, also talk about them, rank them. If you guys want us to continue to do these, let us know. We have a lot more, uh, like four costs would be a riot just because there's so many good ones in there as well. I think two and one. Guys, we're going to be going over to Alex's side of the channel to talk about Mockingbird in review, the top 10 X-Men and Avengers and the Snapchat mailbag returns. Thank you guys so much for hanging out this week. And as always, until the next one, happy snapping.